Fat. Whether the accused person was in the deceased house on 19th of September 2018, and whether he was the last person to be seen with the deceased. The fifth item, question. Whether the first accused person had a gun on the particular night and used it to subdue the deceased. The next issue I'll be looking at is whether the first accused person was positively identified on the identification parade. And lastly, but of course not the least but very important, a recap of whether and then the prosecution have given this court adequate evidence to make a finding that the first accused murdered the deceased. So let's take the first issue. And the question is, did the first accused person know the deceased prior to her death? And this question has arisen because the evidence of the first accused person is I did not know the deceased at all prior to her death. So let's analyze the evidence together. I have considered the prosecution evidence and the evidence of PW10, George Kimani, the brother of the deceased, is that he has, has been, is known to the accused person because they were together at Kenya Polytechnic. As far back as, I think, two or two, they were in the same class, taking the same course in hotel and beverage management. It is the evidence of that witness, please mark the date, on 31st of August 2018, he was with the first accused person in the house of the deceased. The death hearing was on allegedly a known time, but it's said to be 19th of September. But I am saying, and I said, please mark the date. This witness, the brother of the deceased, says, prior to the death of my sister, on 31st of August 2018, I, my girlfriend, the first accused, and the deceased were in the deceased's house. Ramuria Gardens, same apartment. And that the sister, the deceased, mentioned to him that she was communicating with the first accused on Instagram. That on the material night, the first accused person and him slept on the sofa set, otherwise known as the coach, Whereas the deceased and the brother's girlfriend slept, and I'm not saying this for no reason, everything I say has a reason, slept on the deceased bed. It is also the evidence of George Kimani. On 19th of September, the deceased sent him a screenshot of a conversation between her and the first accused. And that conversation was to this effect. The first accused was telling the deceased that when he returns from Mombasa, he would go and see George Kimani, that is the deceased brother, for a drink. And that the deceased was telling the first accused person, don't spoil my brother. 19th of September. My observation from the evidence is that this evidence of George Kimani, that on 31st of August 2018, 
He was in the deceased house with the first accused person, was not disputed through cross-examination of the witness by the first accused person. And I will tell you why. This was the nature of cross-examination by the first accused person. I quote, The deceased was communicating with Joey, but she didn't describe how they were. I believe they were friends. There is a night we spent with the first accused house in the house of the deceased. We were all happy. I slept on the couch. I woke up in the morning. The first accused person had already gone. When I woke up, I was not very drunk. I wouldn't know what the first accused person did with my sister when I was asleep. I don't know whether he was another man in my sister's life. If he was, I would have known. I did not know Kaka. And my analysis of this cross-examination does not lead to an accused person denying that I have never, I don't know, the deceased. Further to this evidence, it is the prosecution case that there was a video retrieved from the first accused cell phone which allegedly which was allegedly recorded by the first accused person which shows that he was in the first uh, the deceased house prior to her death i did not have the benefit of that video i must make it clear but more importantly and this evidence to the court was very important. Why am I saying it was very important? Because the evidence of George Kimani is evidence from a relative of the deceased. I treated the next evidence that I'm going to speak to as independent evidence to the question as to whether the first accused person knew the deceased prior to her death. This is the evidence of number 70110, Corporal Jonathan Limo, who testified as PW33. This is an officer tied to Safaricom law enforcement. He's a data analyst and he said in his evidence that he analyzed data from a telephone number 0727-001675 registered in the name of the first accused person, Joseph Irungu Kuria. He also analyzed data from two cell phone numbers, 0727, um, sorry, 0704, 170422, 0715, 775856. Both of them were registered in the name of the deceased, Monica Nyawira. Money. It is the evidence of this witness that on 1st of September 2018, the number of the first accused person called the number of the deceased. And that call was made at DOD Langata and it was an outgoing call. Based, therefore, on the evidence of George Kimani and the data analyst PW3, it is the finding of this court that the evidence by the first accused person that he did not know, the deceased prior to her death, is untenable, it is insincere, and it is an afterthought, and it is false. It is the finding of this court that the first accused person was known to the deceased prior to her death. Allow me to move to the next item.
This next item is whether the first accused person stole an identity card of Dominic Bissera and used it to access Ramuria Gardens where the murder took place on the fateful night. I will be probably returning back to this evidence. You will get to know why. But let me speak to it now. <coughs> Excuse me.